Hello there and welcome. In this video we're going to talk about chapter 4 in Introduction to Economics 1. Elasticity is one of the most important concepts in economics. It is not a physical thing like a cat's stretch. For economics, elasticity is the response of one variable to another. Elasticity measures the responsiveness of the variable B when a change in the variable A happens. In the illustration, the girl pulls the elephant. The elephants to respond to that may be a gentle pull that causes girl to come forward, or it may be a hard response which throws the girl on the floor. Elasticity is measured using percentage changes. What this means is the changes in amounts can't measure elasticity. Because of that, all elasticity formulas use percentage changes. In the formula here, the triangle on the right of the percent sign represents change. One thing that is widely misunderstood is that elasticity being the same with slope. Elasticity is a different concept than slope. It is calculated differently and it is a completely different variable. There are four main types of elasticity. These are price elasticity of demand, income elasticity of demand, cross price elasticity of demand, and price elasticity of supply. Price elasticity of demand is the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. It is the responsiveness of demand to price change. Price elasticity of demand always has a negative value because of the law of demand. Availability of closed substitutes increases the absolute value of the elasticity. Type of the goods also determine the value. The more luxurious the good is, the higher is the absolute value of the elasticity. Lastly, longer periods of time causes a higher elasticity value. There are some extreme cases of price elasticity of demand. On the left, you can see the perfectly inelastic demand. This type of demand is not affected by any price change. This means, whatever the price is, the consumers are going to buy the product. On the right, however, you can see the perfectly elastic demand. This type of demand is affected by even a minimal change in price. This means that even a smallest change in price causes demand to disappear. There is a close relation between total revenue and price elasticity of demand. Low price elasticities of demand creates higher total revenues. This is due to the fact that a low elasticity means dependency or even an addiction. On the whole world, some of the most taxable and profitable products include cigarettes, alcohol, perfumes and even firearms. These goods are either considered to be necessities or are addictive goods. A tax increase, meaning a higher price, does not cause a sharp fall on the consumption of those. Income elasticity of demand is the second type of elasticities. It is measured by percentage change in the quantity demanded divided by percentage change in income. It measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded to changes in income. For normal goods, it is positive and for inferior goods, it is negative. Cross-price elasticity is the third type of elasticities. It measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded of the good A against the change in the price of a uh, good named B. Cross-price elasticity is positive for substitutes. Conversely, for complements, the cross-price price elasticity is negative. However, there are goods with no relation at all. For unrelated goods, like here, laptop and onion, the cross-price elasticity is zero. The last type of elasticity is price elasticity of supply. It measures the responsiveness of supply to price changes. It is calculated with the formula, which is percentage change in quantity supplied divided by percentage change in price. 
Availability of inputs increase the value of the elasticity. Like price elasticity of demand, longer periods of time increases the value of the price elasticity of supply. Governments sometimes intervene in markets and set a price ceiling. In a market with equilibrium, a ceiling with a higher value than the equilibrium price does not change a thing. This is shown on the left. However, if the ceiling price is lower than the equilibrium price, a shortage arises. This is shown on the right. Governments may intervene in markets using price floors. The most obvious example of this is the minimum wage. Governments set a minimum wage level in order to provide an acceptable social welfare. But this is an intervention on the market and, and interventions cause markets to become inefficient. This is shown in the illustrations. A minimum wage level caused uh, the labor market to work inefficiently and produce an unemployment. Without minimum wage, there would be no unemployment, but also there would be so low wages that cause bigger social problems. Another type of intervention into markets by governments is taxing. Taxes increase the prices. But the question here is, who pays the tax? This is answered by elasticities. A high demand elasticity and low supply elasticity causes sellers to pay for most of the tax. Conversely, a high supply elasticity and low demand elasticity causes buyers to pay for most of the tax. The last thing we are going to emphasize is surplus. A surplus for consumers is the difference between what they would pay to buy and what they actually paid. Similarly, a surplus for producers is the difference between the minimum price that they would produce the good and the price at which they actually sold it. The surplus areas are shown in the illustrations, the A and B. The important thing to know here is that any intervention to market system causes these surpluses to decrease, reasoning causing uh, the market to become inefficient. Thanks for watching.